And we're back with some more Western Michigan Broncos franchise mode in FHM 9. And the last one, we went through quite a uh, interesting little national signing day there as we had some trouble with glitches. But in the end, it looks like they were ironed out. So we were able to continue. So we are now here on January 1st. We're currently 15, 2, and 1. Very good season so far. And we are going to start things out today with the verbal commitment stage. So where are we picking? We are picking at number nine. Ooh, this is a Michigan player. Michigan born, Johnny Curry. Yeah, I think I'll ask him to commit to our team. All right, yeah, that makes sense. He was, at least he went to a Michigan based team. He went to the Michigan Wolverines, not your Western Michigan Broncos. So next nomination, we do need a winger, Doug Elfring. I mean, it might take a while, but yeah, why not? No, okay. Ooh, a right defenseman with a three-star ability already. Although he is 17, so I guess that makes sense. Up to this point, it's been 15-year-olds. So Blake Fiddler will join us? Nope. Well, obviously nothing set in stone right now, but Mizzou Duluth definitely has the advantage. All right, so we're at our nomination now. See if I can get a goaltender for later. Sam Whiteley. I mean, he's not looking too great, but you never know how fast he'll grow. We only have three goalies right now anyway, so can't hurt. Nominate Sam Whiteley. Yeah, nice. I'm going to try to take this winger from Miami, Scott Russell. Nope. Okay. Oh, all right. We just got another left defenseman here. Gordon Jennings, apparently. Two and a half star ability already. So we do have the advantage to get him on National Signing Day next year. Oh, hey, we finally got a winger. <laughs> Bruce Wallace. Unfortunately, he's not looking too good there. But he does have a few years to get his ratings up there. He's only 15. Hey, we got another defenseman, the right defenseman this time, Tim Kane. 6'1 at 15 years of age. Good puck handler already. Oh, also, from what I've seen on the updates for the patch notes, apparently the negotiation stat does actually matter for uh, recruiting players through National Signing Day. So <laughs> I guess it was a bit of a mistake to ignore that for the first couple of years there, but now we know. And it seems like we'll get a lot of skill points to spend this year anyway, considering how well our team is doing. But you know, the more skill points, the better. So hopefully we can get as many of the end of season goals as possible. So it would be nice to get that elusive GM of the year. I mean, obviously nothing we've done up to this point in this GM mode has warranted it, but you know, in, in past GM modes, I, I've felt a little robbed. <laughs> especially with some particularly very good teams. But still, the most important thing, obviously, is the championship. But anyway, I got off topic there. Let's, let's keep going with the verbal commitments here. All right, so we got another player on D. We got Marcus Wilson with one of our own picks. He's a four-star potential, half-star ability, only 15 years of age. So we're looking set on defense now. Unfortunately, there's not too many good players left in the way of players that we actually have scouted. And we do have a particular need at right defense, considering we only have three, according to the team info. So decided to go for Marcus Wilson. Obviously, there is Tyler Rankin, who I could have gone for, but I'm not a fan of his particularly low mental ratings. When Marcus Wilson, I mean, is not much better, honestly, but at least some of his other ratings are up there in the green like determination and temperament professionalism whereas Rankin I mean he he does have temperament up there at 20 and professionalism at 16 but his lows are really low like bravery at two leadership at five uh, not a fan of that whereas you can see Wilson's a bit more balanced particularly in the mental ratings all right the computers are mostly just picking garbage now so I'm gonna skip the other team's nominations at this point all right I think we can go after Ryan Smith here 15 years of age, only five foot five. I mean, I guess he still has some time to grow, but some pretty solid ratings for a 15 year old. So I think we'll go after him. Ryan Smith, there you go. He has agreed to join. Of course, we will have to wait to get his official nomination, but looking good so far for him. At this point, there's not much that stands out. So I think we'll take a winger in Mitch Vardy. Some okay ratings as a 15 year old. All right, there you go. He has decided to join us. May as well take a crack at Chris Farrell, who, <laughs> Not looking great rating wise, but once again, only 15. He's got time. Try to get Spencer LeBlanc here. He's got 16 intelligence. Yep. It definitely seems like it's easier to get these later picks. Probably because there's not as many teams bidding on the players, right? Or, well, I guess bidding isn't exactly the right term for it because that's, you know, involves money. But uh, there's, there's not as many teams nominating them. And at this point, I don't really care who else we get because most of these players are just not very good. So I think we're going to let the computer finish the nominations. 
Oh boy, the click is growing larger. Is that going to affect Team Harmony at all? It's looking all right at the moment, but I'll have to keep an eye on that for sure. Ooh, Brooks out for one to two months with a fractured hand. Not a good one to go down. That's a three-star right winger. At least he'll probably be back for the NCAA tournament, though. That's the good news. Okay, good. Team Harmony is getting better. It is definitely getting better. It's green now. So hopefully this this conflict between Sikkanen and Sjöland is over soon. Certainly looks like it will be. It's down at two now. And here we have the NCAA tournament of year number three. But first we are going to take a look at the award nominees. So for the Hobie Baker, you have Cutter Gauthier, Luke Hughes, and Matthew Coronado. For the Mike Richter Award, you have Dylan Silverstein, Luca Cloutier, and Owen Say. Top Athletic Director, Ben Russell, Joe Migliaccio, and John Hegarty. Then for the Hockey Humanitarian Award, you have Jonathan Bala, Luke Hughes, and Sean Farrell. And the Spencer T. Penrose Award, you have Greg Brown, Matt Wheeler, and Mike Schaefer. And we are facing the NCAA champions from year number one, the St. Cloud State Huskies. However, it appears this year, they are 3-29-2. and two. Ouch. That's rough. After their championship in year number one, it looks like they fell off hard there. They must have had a lot of players graduating. And game one of the conference playoffs ends in a 5-1 to one victory over St. Cloud State. I forgot to go into options and click show games, so couldn't go into it. But nonetheless, we'll, we'll recap it anyway. So the three stars of the game are Davidson, Brooks, and Ozelinch. Shots are 42 to 19 in favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. First period, you have Siolan with the goal from Steele and Davidson to make it 1 0. And then you have Stenman from Brooks and Davidson to make it 2 0. And the second period, you have Dovar Tinling from Izagai and D'Alessandro to make it 3 0. And then Gabriel Lundberg unassisted to make it 4 0. Heading into the third, where White Shingot scores from Ozilinch and Linfors to make it 5 0. Rhyme scores soon after for St. Cloud State to at least not get the shutout, but it is too little, much too little, too late for the St. Cloud State Huskies. And that means we're now on to round number two against the Colorado College Tigers. Not the first time we face them. So here we go. Let's go into it this time. First period underway. And there's a goal by Maxim Levashevsky from Liam Steele and Kaspar Conrad and Kelvgard to make it one nothing late in the first period. And that's it for one. Up 1-0 heading into the second. And there's another one. Liam Steele from Gutstick and Linfors to make it 2-0. And there's another. Gustav Portillo from Dovar Tinling to make it 3-0. And there's one for Colorado College. Noah Serdachny. Serdachny. <laughs> to make it 3-1. But there's one back for us. Kaspar, Conrad, and Kelgard with the goal from Yuntorp and Lemeshevsky to put us up 4-1 late in the second. And there's another one. Marek Doucette makes it 5-1. And we are heading into the third with a four goal lead. There it is. We win five to one after a scoreless third period. And we move on to the conference finals. Shots were 46 to 23, favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. And the three stars of the game are Lemeshevsky, Steele, and Conradson Kelvgard. And we will be facing the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs in the finals of the conference playoffs. Here we go. Game against Minnesota Duluth. Going into it once again. First period. There it is. Kenta is a guy with a goal from Linfors and Tinling. Puts us up 1-0. There's another one. Ivan Zinchenko with a goal from Steele and Gosik. We're up 2-0 late in the first period. And heading into the second up by two. We are on a 4-on-4 four four to start the period. And there's one for Minnesota Duluth. You have Matthew Perkins with a goal. Cuts the deficit to one. And there's one for us. Maxim Levashevsky from Risto and Ozilinch. We are now up by two once again. And heading into the third period. Still up by two. Come on, hold the lead. Hold the lead. And there's one for Max Plant of Minnesota Duluth. Close game. Come on, Broncos. Oh, Adam Kleber with the goal from Minnesota Duluth. We are now tied late in the third, and we are headed to overtime. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? No one yet. Heading to a second overtime. And it's Minnesota Duluth. Plant with the goal, second of the game. And that is going to be it for the conference playoffs. So <laughs> I hope that means... Uh, we still get a spot in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I know Minnesota Duluth is guaranteed one, but not exactly sure how the rest of the tournament is filled out. Shots were 51 to 39 in favor of Minnesota Duluth, so they dominated. Three stars of the game, James Gosick and Bettens. Uh, oh, is this is this like a two-game series or something? No, we're just oh, we're facing Minnesota Duluth again, this time in the NCAA tournament. Okay. I mean, that <laughs> works out for me. So if we lose this, I'm, then I'm 
pretty sure we're out of the NCAA tournament. Let's see. Can I take a look at the stats from those past few games there? No, it doesn't look like it. There's the All-Star game, the preseason, the regular season, which I don't think what we just played doesn't count as regular season, but it doesn't count as playoffs either. Is there just no way to check that? Hmm. I think, we, I think we came across, now that I think of it, I think we came across this last year where I was trying to check the stats from the uh, from the conference playoffs, but does not appear to be a screen for it. Ooh. So one thing that came out of those playoffs, Barrett Brooks injured for four months with a ruptured Achilles tendon. Ouch. So uh, he, he is done. Definitely done. Let's see. What, what class is he? Is he a senior? Looks like he's a junior. He's played three years. So he should be back next year, presuming he doesn't like red shirt or something. All right, here we go. For real this time <laughs> against the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. Game one of the NCAA playoffs. Here we go. And there's one for Dovar Tinling from Owens Lynch and Cardona. But it's up one nothing early in the first period. And there's one for Minnesota Duluth. Adam Kleber gets to go late in the first period. And we are tied heading into the second. Oh, there's one for Minnesota. Dean Noonan. With the goal about up 2-1 halfway through the second period. And okay, all right, there's another one. Dovar Timling with the second of the game from Izagai and Steele. We have a 2-2 two -two tie halfway through the second period. Come on, boys. Ugh. Aiden Dubinsky for Minnesota Duluth. We're still down one, but that is certainly not impossible to come back from. So come on, here we go. Get the tie game. Uh, oh, dear. Not looking good. Oh, there we go. Ivan Zinchenko with the goal from Stenman and Cardona. And we are tied with the Minnesota Duluth power play. So that was on the penalty kill late in the third period. Come on, Western Michigan killed us off. Very good. We are headed to overtime. Oh boy. Second overtime game in a row against Minnesota Duluth. And this time for the opportunity to advance in the NCAA tournament. Who's it going to be? It will be your Western Michigan Broncos off the stick of Sjoland. Who scores the game winning goal. And we are moving on to round number two. I believe this is the farthest... We have been so far in the NCAA tournament. Shots were 38 apiece. Three stars of the game are Cardona, Gunderson, and Tinling. Uh, what? Excuse me? D did we not just play this game? Leave game. Yeah, we played this game. Do we have? Do we have another? Do, do we have like a a back-to-back <laughs> -back on the same day? Is that possible? We don't have another game on the schedule. Oh, hold on, hold on. Where are we in the? Okay, it appears. We haven't moved on yet, but it says it's a one game series and we just played it. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> I, I don't know. Should I go into it? <laughs> I, I'm scared it's going to redo what just happened, except possibly with a different result. Uh, Hold on. L let me. I'm going to save this as a backup file just in case something's gone wrong here. All right. So I've got ahead and made a backup save file. Now, what the heck is going on here with this? If I, if I go into it. Hold up, let's sim game. Was that a legitimate back-to-back -back on the same day? Or did the game just glitch there? <laughs> let's see, continue. So we won the game 3-2. to two. Shots were 43-40. to 40. Three stars of the game, Portillo, Plot, and Hambly. I, I, like, I am... I, I'm not sure what's going on here. Because <laughs> if I go to the calendar, it shows me the first game that we played. Yeah, the 4-3 the victory in overtime. But there, it doesn't look like there's any way to get to the game that I just... Tried to simulate being the second one. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that was some sort of glitch. I, <laughs> that, that was weird. Actually, does it include the stats of the game that was just simulate? Yeah, it does. So did, did we just play like a phantom game or something? <laughs> I can't find it anywhere on the schedule. I, I mean, I, I guess this is okay to keep as long as the game doesn't crash. So what's odd is that in yesterday's scores, it shows it's showing two different games on here when on the schedule it's only shown one game the, the game that we actually simulated through yeah that's uh that is certainly an odd one that's the first time i've ever come across this glitch that that, that has to be a glitch I, i'm not accepting that as anything else because like if, if that was a back-to-back -back on the same day you would think that the schedule would show both of them right but it doesn't. <laughs> it only shows one. It's just so weird that that game happened twice. Like I'm not sure what I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, what what is going on here? So the the NCAA tournament bracket is showing that we won three to two. So it's counting our second game, but the schedule is counting our first game. 
What, what is going on here? I, I can only hope that the game doesn't crash from this because this is exactly the kind of thing that would make something like EA NHL crash. <laughs> You have to you have to admit that is this is exactly the kind of thing that would that would happen right before a crash in EA NHL. Oh boy, uh, I'm kind of nervous to go ahead now, but uh, I guess I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so we have a game against the Michigan Wolverines up tomorrow. Now I want to take a look at other teams' schedules, or more specifically, the stats of other teams. Do other players also have two? Yeah, there's some there's some players here that already have two games played, even though there's only been one game played for each team so far in the NCAA tournament. So that happened for every team then. <laughs> every team played each other twice on the same day, but the game only counted one of them, at least from a tournament standpoint, right? From the, the game that actually matters to move on in the tournament. But the stats counted both games, it appears, for both teams, for, for all teams, I should say. So if we take a look here at the NCAA bracket, it has the Minnesota Golden Gophers winning 9-1 to over Miami. Now, if my theory is correct, that's probably their second game. And if the schedule is the same for them, then that means they'll have a different score right here. Yeah, every team played two games against each other, but only counted one of them. <laughs> I think we found a bug here, guys. <laughs> I think we found a bug. That, that's that's an odd one. That is a really, really odd one. All right, so I guess uh, we'll see if the same thing happens here in this next round against Michigan. And I'll be interested to see if the same thing happens with every other team. Wow, that was... <laughs> what a discovery. I, I don't know if anyone else has seen that so far, but that is definitely... That is a bug, for sure. No doubt about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Game against Michigan. They're 26-6-3 during the regular season. So almost the exact same record as us, although it appears they actually have one more game played over there in their division. So here we go. Game against Michigan. First period underway. And that's a goal for Michigan. Charlie Serrato puts them up 1-0 early in the first. And there's one for us. Kaspar Conrad's in Kelgard with the goal from Sioland and Portillo. Gets it tied late in the first. And second period time. And there's a goal for Michigan. Keenan Draper with the goal. Puts them up 2-1. And that is it for the second period. We are heading to the third, down by one. Come on, Broncos. There's one, Gabriel Lumberg from Risto and Davidson. And headed to overtime once again. Wow. Who is it going to be? Come on, Western Michigan. Come on, Western Michigan. Come on. Oh, we're headed to a second overtime. Come on, Western Michigan. Come on, Western Michigan. There it is. Siolan with the goal to get us the 3-2 victory against Michigan. Now, is the same thing going to happen? <laughs> is the same thing going to happen? Shots were 57-4. to 40. Well, I guess that will happen in the game that has two full overtime periods. But yeah, that, that was quite the game. Three stars of the game, Risto, Draper, and Hambly. Doesn't look like that same thing happened. Yeah, that same thing didn't happen for any other team. So I think it's safe to rule out the possibility that the game intended for two games to happen in the first round because that, that was clearly a glitch. Because the second round only had one game, right? Yeah, that, that's, that has to be a glitch. That absolutely has to be a, a bug of some sort. But nonetheless, we did beat Michigan, and we're now moving on to face the Ohio State Buckeyes in the Final Four, or the Frozen Four, I should say. And that's Cornell versus Boston College, I believe? Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Boston College, 32-3. and three. All right, game against Ohio State. They are 17-11-5 on the regular season with 39 points. Going into it. So here we go, our first game in the Frozen Four. Let's get to it. First period underway. And there's one for your Western Michigan Broncos. Liam Steele with the goal from Lundberg. Puts us up 1-0 halfway through the first period. And there's one for OSU. Cole McWard with the goal. Yeah, tied. And that's the end of the first. Heading to the second, tied at 1. And there's one, Hiroki Goshsik with the goal from Zinchenko. To put us up 2-1 early in the second period. And that is it for two. Heading into the third on the power play, up 2-1. Ooh, Ryan Rusinski with the goal to get us tied at two. And we are headed to overtime yet again. Come on, Western Michigan. Come on, Western Michigan. Ah, OSU. Steele, their Steele gets the goal. John Paul Steele, to be specific. Unfortunate that Liam Steele <laughs> on our side could not get that. Oh, man. So that ends our dreams of, <laughs> at least for this year, of winning the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Only 21 shots to 17. Wow. Three stars of the game. Salas, Lundberg, and Elger. There were more hits on each side than there were shots. Wow. 30 hits for OSU, 22 for us. 
<laughs> that outnumbered shots for both teams. <laughs> and yes, indeed, that is all she wrote for us in the NCAA tournaments. So it would be OSU versus Boston College in the finals. Wow, and it's Ohio State who wins over Boston College, even though they initially lost against Harvard in round number one. But because that glitch happened, it allowed them a redo, and they won 4-3. to three. And then they make their way past Boston College. <laughs> wow. There, there may be an asterisk. We, we may have to put an asterisk on this NCAA tournament. I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> it's a bit sketchy. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, at least to be fair, at least every team played two games in, in the first round, right? It's not like it was only us. But still, what a weird glitch. <laughs> That's. I don't believe I've seen that before, like, especially two games on the same day like that. <laughs> that's the part that baffles me. Not not two games in the first round, but like the, the the fact that two games were on the same day, even though only one was on the schedule like that. That's a weird one. <laughs> anyway, now that the NCAA playoffs are over, let's check out the stats. And once again, you may have to put a, an asterisk on some of these considering we played one more game than we should have. So in four games played you have Siolin with four points and Kelvgard with three Risto Steele and Portillo also with three then you have Tinlings and Chenko Lundberg Cardona and Stenman also with two then you have Gorsik is a guy Ogilans Sinkinen Lemashevsky and Davidson all with one and in goal you have William Hambly with a 926 save percentage in four games played so not bad overall still would have liked to have the win there over Ohio State but I guess they're the champions for a reason. But yeah, over, overall, it seems like they definitely still have some patchwork to do here in the NCAA part of the game because uh, that we're still running into quite a few glitches here. Lachlan Tetaranko is looking great. So I assume he's going to be on our roster next year. <laughs> as, as long as he doesn't get signed to the NHL. Don't look like he's been drafted to the NHL yet. And here we go. NCAA awards ceremony. The Hockey Humanitarian Award goes to Luke Hughes, who is now a free agent, apparently. And the Hobie Baker Award between Luke Hughes, Matthew Coronado, and Cutter Gauthier. It is Cutter Gauthier of Boston College. And the playoff MVP is Ryan Rusinski of OSU. And the Mike Richter Award it is Dylan Silverstein of Boston College. 941 save percentage. No wonder they were good. And for the best GM, you have John Hegarty of Boston College as well. No surprise there. And then you have for the Spencer T. Penrose Award, Greg Brown, also of Boston College. So Boston College mostly sweeps the awards besides, of course, the playoff MVP and the NCAA tournament champion. And then Luke Hughes obviously was on uh, Michigan. All right, let's see. No one graduating this year. Wow, we have no seniors, right? We have one junior in Hambly. The rest are sophomores and freshmen. I mean, for, for a team full of sophomores and freshmen, this team's pretty good. Oh, no, never mind. We did have a senior. Wyatt Shingoth, right. He was our captain this year, too. He had 24 points in 31 games played. And the only reason I noticed that is because it says <laughs> FA next to his name here on the point team leaders screen. So good last season from him. But it looks like soon Tetaranko will be coming in and taking over for him. And he's at three and a half star ability now. And here's our season score for year number three. Did not get manager of the year. We reached the playoffs. We had a winning season. We had a winning percentage of 600 or better. And we finished first. We did not reach the finals and we did not win the championship. Total season score is 29 and total career score is 64. All right, my negotiating skill is now up to 12. So hopefully that will mean some better luck in the national signing day. Although, of course, we only have one person graduating next year. So it's not like we're even going to be able to get that many players in the first place, at least in this upcoming national signing day, because I think it'll only allow you to draft as many players as you have roster spots available for the upcoming year. Yep, there it is. Lachlan Tetarenko has officially joined the Western Michigan Broncos. Looking like he might be our first line center, to be honest. Actually, Tinling's a better ability, four-star ability. But Tatarenko, yeah, he's definitely in the top six. Yeah, so he's on the second line with Gosik and Zinchenko. And then other freshmen coming in are Vincent Tupui, uh, Roman Zapp, and Tayden Ratty. I believe these two, at least, Zapp and Ratty, had actually redshirted last year. I'm not sure about Tupui. Did he redshirt as well? Can I check that anywhere? Yeah, he redshirted last year. Okay, so all three of them redshirted. So they're still freshmen. And with that, I don't believe we have anything to do here, really, except simulate ahead to the Hall of Fame inductions and then to the preseason. And we have the Hall of Fame inductions of year number three. It will be Alexander McGillney, Zdeno Chara, Patrick Marlowe, and John Van Beesbrook. 
on to the hockey hall of fame all right so here we are at the start of the preseason of year number four and with that i think we will end things off here and the next one we'll start year number four and get through national signing day see you guys in the next one